Good day, good day, everybody. It's me, your favorite Aussie YouTuber, Waddles. I'm back. Oh boy, but I'm back. That would be an understatement. I'm back and I'm excited. Today, I have something really cool in mind. I think you're going to like it. Today, in this video, we're going to take a look at the official Minecraft Caves and Cliffs iceberg. This iceberg is a big iceberg. There's some stuff that is really common and obvious, and then there are some really, really obscure things. I mean, I talk about this game every single day. I, I kind of feel like I know a lot about it, and some of the stuff I had never heard of until working on this video. I did a bunch of research, and I figured everything out. We're going to break down the iceberg, how these things work. We start at the top of the iceberg, and we work our way all the way down to the bottom of the iceberg. I also have some bonus things that I'd like to add to the iceberg, so I'm going to throw those in at the end. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Remember to leave a like, it really helps the videos out. Down below, go comment something, I don't know, uh, maybe maybe make it about polar bears. Comment something about polar bears down below, that's sweet. And subscribe if you're new. Let's take a look at the iceberg. Two final things before we start chipping away at the iceberg. Iceberg charts, if you're new to them, how do they work? Well, this right here, you see that? That's the top of the iceberg. Down here, that's the bottom of the iceberg. Iceberg charts are pretty easy to break down. Things at the top, like split into two parts, yeah, everybody knows that about the update. Things at the bottom, well, we could just say, if you know about them, maybe go outside. <laughs> I'm kidding. Also, this iceberg was created by Reddit user u slash logical mind. I'll link the original thread down in the description. Layer number one, the top of the iceberg. A lot of these things are pretty self-explanatory, or if you're in the community, like around the channel, pretty active, then you probably already know a lot about these things. We're going to go through these ones pretty quickly. Split into two parts. Originally, when the 1.17 and 1.18 updates were revealed, they were actually all just 1.17. At Minecraft Live 2020, Caves and Cliffs update was revealed. It was really sweet, and it was going to be huge. It was also all going to be one update. Fast forward like six months to April 14th this year, the developers play a cruel and unusual late April Fool's joke and split the update in half. <laughs> no, just kidding. It's probably for the better. The update and the contents inside of it takes time to make. They needed more time, so they split it in half. Next up, we're going to talk about bigger caves and cave biomes. The 1.18 update will be changing cave generation forever. The cave generation now is going to be sweet. The caves are going to be really, really huge, and it's awesome. Inside of some of these big caves, we're going to have brand new biomes. One of the new biomes is the dripstone caves, and this is what it looks like. The other and better new biome is the Lush Caves biome. There's so much here. So much here, including a new mob, the Axolotl, the next piece of the iceberg. The Axolotl is a Caves and Cliffs mob. In 1.17, these things spawn all over the place. In 1.18, the Lush Caves, the only spot where you can find these things. Axolotls are adorable, they're amazing, and yeah, like I said, one of the Caves and Cliffs mobs. When it comes to Caves and Cliffs mobs, by the time the update releases, we only have one left, the Goat. The Goat is also a Caves and Cliffs mob. This is a Goat. Oh, you know what I lied? I took a look back at the iceberg. There is another mob, the Glow Squid. The Glow Squid is another new Caves and Cliffs mob. It's the Glow Squid. They're in Caves and Cliffs. Mm-hmm. Next up, we have Warden and Deep Dark. I'm going to go ahead and group these things together because they kind of belong together. The Warden and the Deep Dark are two Caves and Cliffs features that were actually postponed to the Wild Update. At Minecraft Live 2021, these features were showed off again. They're way better than ever, so their postponing is good. But they're not in the Caves and Cliffs. Wrapping up the first layer of the iceberg with Cliffs, shockingly, in the Caves and Cliffs update, Cliffs are actually updated. I, I know, who would have guessed? Next up, world height change. The world gets taller, the world gets deeper. The bottom of the world is now negative 64. That's where Bedrock is. A lot more room for caves and cool things under the ground. The world also gets taller. The build height limit is going to be 320. Mountains can generate as tall as 260. It's not very common, but it's pretty sweet. And you see, intentionally, I saved the best for last, Deep Slate. Deep Slate is new-ish at this point. It's one of the best blocks in the game, though still, it's so nice. Layer 1, we can call it done. As long as you're not like brand new to the game, new to the community, then you probably knew about all of those things. You're essentially a professional, good on you. Moving on to Layer 2. This is where things start to get a little bit more obscure, but not off the bat, because Amethyst Shields. <laughs> Amethyst Shields are in the game. If you play the game, you probably found one. They're sweet. More texture changes. So this iceberg was actually made like six months ago. If we look at this in the context of 1.18, I have a big one. If we take a look at the doors inside of here, look at this oak door. That texture is so different. If we take a look at signs inside of this thing, the textures finally make sense. If you place a sign, you know, you get the bark on the bottom. Well, the item texture now finally actually reflects that. With the context of 1.17 as well, honestly, there were so many more. Including the next piece of the iceberg, sudden or texture changes. So I don't know uh, if sudden is referring to just how they were changed from snapshot to snapshot or what, but or texture changes. In 1.17, the or textures changed. I think all of these, uh, other than copper because it's new, I think all of these textures are completely different other than diamond. I think diamond is the one that stayed the same. Of course, deep slate ores were also added. Ah uh, yes, next up we have azalea tree, better known as oak tree with different leaves. So here's the oak tree with different leaves. The leaves are really nice, I like the two variants. The thing with this tree, if you dig straight down from it, you will always find a lush cave biome. That's kind of cool. 
Drip Leaf Mechanics. Uh, so honestly, there are actually kind of a lot of mechanics with these things. Uh, we'll just go over some of the basics. Drip Leaf right here, if I place it down, it needs to be on a certain block. I can't put it on stone, but clay is good. And then if I stand on it, it breaks through. It's going to stay like that for a little while, then it jumps back up. If I stand up here and crouch, uh, same thing. I'm just too heavy for the plant. If I were to give this plant a little bit of power, though, you know, logically speaking, of course, this thing is never going to fall anymore because it interacts with power. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, they're actually pretty cool, though. Okay, so I don't know where my bedrock skin went, and Steve is blinking, which is weird, but uh, goat horn sound. Goat horn is a removed caves and cliffs item. The sound... It's a raid. Block removal. Uh, okay, so that's a little bit of a tricky one. That could refer to a couple different things. It could be referring to how bedrock is removed when you upgrade an old chunk. Old chunks, they end at Y0. The new chunks, negative 64. When you upgrade one of these uh, old chunks, the bedrock is removed. So block removal. But it could also maybe mean the removal of blocks from the update, like the bundle, the archaeology blocks, whatever those would have been, and the goat horn. So block removal. I took a look through the creative inventory and I couldn't really find anything that was like in the game before that was removed, so I think it's gotta be one of those two things. Not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure. Deep Slate Variants, if you don't know about these things, you're missing out, like uh, do some research uh, yourself. A Deep Slate Variants, the Deep Slate Bricks, the Deep Slate Tiles, amazing. You you're really missing out, like I said, like really, do, do some research. 1.17, snapshot 21w19a, changed anvils big time. Before the snapshot, 35 characters, that's it. Like, only 35 letters for an item name, it's kind of sad. After that snapshot, 50. Anvils got a huge buff, now, finally, I can create this sword that I, I mean, I guess I've always been wanting to make. 50 characters right there. Less ore exposure. Caves and cliffs redoes how ores generate across the world. In the case of certain ores, they have less air exposure. That's what this one is talking about. Basically, like, for example, let's say iron. I don't know if iron is the perfect example, but maybe iron has less air exposure. That means you have to dig a little bit more for it or head into a water cave. This was pointed out to me. Amazing, amazing. There's no air inside of this thing. It's all water, which means the ores... I think they just they just generate all over the place. So water caves, they're actually kind of useful for mining in this update. Finally, to finish off the second layer of the iceberg, better mineshaft support. You know, now that I think about it, I'm pretty sure the mineshaft is the only structure to get updated in the entire Caves and Cliffs update. Like, both of them, kind of crazy. But anyways, the chains, you see these things? They're new-ish. You see these logs down there? Well, those are also new-ish. The Caves and Cliffs update makes mineshafts make a little bit more sense. They can hang from the ceiling, they connect to the floor better. Layer 1, layer 2 of the iceberg, they're in the books. We finished them, we're doing good so far. Moving on to the third layer of the iceberg. This is where some things started to become a little bit more obscure for me. We'll cross off some of the more obvious ones first, like Infested Deep Slate. Infested Deep Slate is a block. It has silverfish inside of it, just like Infested Stone. You know, you mine the stuff, the silverfish comes out. It's not good. It's a trap. Glow Lichen. Glow Lichen is a new, uh, plant? I mean, I'm pretty sure this is a plant. It's a new plant. The ambiance that it creates with the glow. Oh, it's so vibey. It's great. The loudest Minecraft mob of all time, the Screaming Goat. The Screaming Goat screams. It's <laughs> it's actually kind of hilarious. And then the Screaming Goat is also a little bit more violent. They like do their whole ramming thing a little bit more than often. But the screams, really the screams are what these things are all about. <laughs> it's perfect. A small fun fact about these things, I'm pretty sure I read somewhere that some of the noises that these things make are like human screaming and then some of them are actual goat noises, uh, I think. <laughs> Which explains why they're so strange. Infinite Lava is something the players have been asking for for like a really long time. When I was younger, I always trusted YouTubers and thought I could make like infinite lava sources and stuff, but you know, they, they were all lying, like always. So anyways, lava source right there, dripstone block right there, and then pointed dripstone, cauldron below it. Give it like a lot of time and it's gonna drip lava. It's actually pretty sweet. And then the cauldron can fill up with lava. It's great. It's actually a real lava generator. Pointed dripstone damage. So check this out. Villager, oh no, it fell onto the dripstone. It took damage. That's not good at all. It takes an increased amount of damage. Uh, now we can go ahead and put this villager inside of the hole, uh, or put that one inside of there, and then we have dripstone up here. The dripstone fell, and it missed. All right, well, that's fine. That's fine. It's no big deal. We'll just put it a little bit closer. Look at that big dripstone. Oh no, it fell, and it hurt the villager. If something falls on a pointed dripstone, it will take way more fall damage than normal. Like this? Yeah, that's not good for the villager. Next up, we have Prevent Falling on Powder Snow. So, I'm not exactly sure what this one means, but I'm pretty sure it's referring to leather boots on Powder Snow, and you won't actually fall into it. You get an advancement for walking on it. Without the leather boots, you walk on a Powder Snow, you sink, and it gets cold pretty quickly. Put the leather boots on, you warm up, and you float. Minecraft 1.17 added a brand new type of basalt. It's actually pretty amazing. Smooth basalt. It's such a nice looking block. You can smelt basalt in a furnace to get smooth basalt, or you could take it from a geode. Smelting it in a furnace is probably way more reliable. You just set up a basalt generator, throw it inside of the furnace, free smooth basalt. And like I said, the block, it looks so good. Like, look at this stuff. Amazing texture. 
Archaeology, oh man, I can almost just not even talk about this stuff anymore. There was so much potential with archaeology. It's such a cool system. But uh, on April 14th, when the update was split, archaeology was postponed. We don't know when archaeology will actually come to the game, but it's such a cool system. Originally, it was meant to be in the caves and cliffs. This next one, this is one of the ones I didn't even realize. So check out this block. That's copper. You know how it looks. Uh, that's what it looks like. This is wax called copper. If it wasn't waxed, it could age. This can age too. This is what the blocks look like, right? Rewind. Minecraft Live 2020. Copper. Right off the bat, the ore texture is different, but that's fine. But the block... Look at how different the block is. Like, wow, the copper block looks so different. I mean, cut copper is like a little bit more similar. Add an extra line to it, but it looks so different. Like, it's a little bit more orange here. It's just different looking. And I didn't even realize. But copper, yeah, the original texture was different. That just about does it for the middle layer of the iceberg. That leaves us with two final things. We'll talk about secret cave types first. So I didn't make the iceberg. Because I didn't make the iceberg, I don't know what the creator of the iceberg was referring to by secret cave types. But I'm pretty sure at least decently sure that maybe they were talking about mesh caves mesh caves were a type of cave that was originally shown off though i don't believe the original version of it is technically in the game i believe the mesh caves basically became these caves right here uh noodle caves i think they're called like the really thin caves that just go up and down sometimes left to right but yeah basically like thin caves so they are actually here they're a little bit different but they're here Additionally, secret cave types could be referring to some of the terrain glitches that were on Bedrock Edition when the new cave generation was being implemented. Earlier on, there were like ice caves that were like really, really cool. I actually made a video on them. They were, they were so cool, and it's sad to see them not actually in the game. Secret cave types, if there's more of them, well, I guess there's so much of a secret that I don't even know about them. So hopefully that's what they were talking about. If I'm wrong, I'm sorry. And finally, another one that honestly I have no clue about at all. Waterlogged glitch. So it's kind of hard to do research on this one. Waterlogged glitch, when I, when I search that, there are so many waterlogged glitches. I don't know which one it's talking about. Waterlogged glitch, though? I guess there was a glitch at some point with waterlogging. <laughs> yeah, that, that would make sense. And that also finishes the third layer of the iceberg. Moving on. All right, so now we're getting deep, man. A lot more interesting. If you're not really involved in the community at all, you just play the game and check out videos every once in a while. A lot of this stuff might be stuff that you never knew about. Green axolotl or lime axolotl, as some people call it. So there are axolotls in the game. They have different color variants. It's pretty cool. There's actually a color variant that isn't used. I'm not sure if it's actually in the game files or anything, but this screenshot right here. This was from one of the developers, I believe. And yeah, the lime axolotl is so cool looking. Like, that would have been amazing to have. I was kind of hoping this would surprise be added to the update at the last second, but yeah, it's not here. Blackstone. It's a type of stone that you can find in the game. The stuff was added in 1.16. In 1.17 snapshot, 21W07A, and the one right after it, 08A, the texture was changed. It wasn't a very big change, and it's something that if you didn't know about, you probably wouldn't have ever noticed, but yeah, the texture changed a little. The Warden in the unconfirmed and now probably deleted cabin. So this is one of my favorite ones in recent Minecraft history. Minecraft Live 2020, when the Warden was being shown off, this cabin room was also shown off. Now the cabin room is very mysterious. What is it? Is it actually here? Is it a structure that would have generated? Or was it player built? Like, what's going on with the thing? There were some conflicting statements from the developers at certain points, but now at this point, with the Deep Dark being completely revamped in ancient cities, it's probably safe to say that the cabin is just gone forever. It was a super mysterious thing, and that's probably how it's always going to be. We'll probably never figure out exactly what it was. That's too bad. Hey, I got my skin back. That's so much better. More skulk blocks. So more recently, in one of the 1.18 betas on Bedrock Edition, the other skulk blocks were actually added to the game. We can check them out. They're pretty cool. Here they are. This is the skulk vein. This is a skulk block. This is the catalyst. And this is the shrieker. They're really, really cool. All of them. Their functionality will be expanded to 1.19, though, because they're not actually in the Caves and Cliffs update anymore. They're really cool, though. 100%. You know about copper oxidization. You place a copper block down, give it a little bit of time, and it changes. It's actually really, really cool. Also, 100%, you know that you can wax it to save a state. So let's say I want it to stay like that forever. Honeycomb on it, and there we go. It stays like that forever. Did you know that you can actually unwax the blocks too? So usually, most people wax the block because they want it to stay like that. They won't really unwax it. But yeah, if you want to unwax it, take an axe to the copper block that is waxed and use it. And then the wax is gone. You lose the honeycomb forever though. But yeah, you can unwax copper blocks. 1.18 caves can get big. They can get like really, really huge. That can be a small problem for the stronghold. If the stronghold generates inside of one of the big open caves, like it almost did right over here, uh, it gets really obvious. Like clearly there's just a stronghold there. There was a change in one of the caves and cliff snapshots that made sure strongholds would be less exposed than ever. It's kind of hard to show off. It's kind of like this right here, but also like not really at the same time. Uh, if a stronghold generates, it will always be encased in stone or deep slate, or at least it should if everything goes right. It doesn't always play out like that though. I don't know exactly what the conditions are, but right here we have a stronghold open to the cave, actually right next to a lush cave and a geo too. Kind of insane. 
So yeah, it doesn't seem to always work, but generally, Stronghold should be less exposed. So you know, things like Deep Slate, things like Stone with a normal pickaxe, they mine like relatively slow. You can actually speed things up, like, a lot. If you place a moss block down, bone meal the moss block, the moss takes over all of it, another right hoe, and you can insta-mine. Insta-mining with the moss block is genius. And actually, in certain cases, it's the only way to go. Now, technically speaking, it's not Deep Slate anymore, but Deep Slate cannot be insta-mined, like, no matter what. Efficiency 5, Netherite Pickaxe with Haste 2, you can't insta-mine it. However, you can turn it into moss blocks and then insta-mine the moss blocks, so you can kind of insta-mine it. Cut off mountains. So this is another one of those ones that can be a little bit tricky to interpret. Not exactly sure what the creator of the iceberg meant here, but cut off mountains. I assume they're referring to the mountains that would get chopped off, like right at 260, the generation limit. Generation has improved a lot since the creation of this iceberg, so it happens a little bit less now, or when it happens, it doesn't look as bad. But yeah, if a mountain tries to generate past 260, it gets cut off at like 256. Finally, to wrap up the second to last layer of the iceberg, an apology. Glow item frame is a block. I did a ton of research for the video and I couldn't figure this out. Like, what does a glow item frame as a block mean? I don't know. Couldn't find anything on it anywhere. Glow item frame as a block? It's a complete mystery. That brings us to here. If you've made it this far in the video, I'd like to thank you. Really appreciate it. Here we are at the deepest part of the Caves and Cliffs update. I actually didn't know about a lot of these things before making this video. Some of this stuff is really interesting. I'd like to start by getting the really obvious ones off of the list. Uh, this is one that you probably knew about. To be honest, I feel like this one should be moved up on the iceberg to something a little bit more obvious, but Drowned. They actually drop copper now instead of gold. Before 1.17, Drowned had a chance to drop gold ingots. 1.17 changed it to copper. 1.17.1 improved the drop rate. Another one that I feel without a doubt should be moved up on the iceberg, Powder Snow in the Cauldron. It's Powder Snow inside of the Cauldron. That's how it works. <laughs> Dimming of Light. Dimming of Light is technically not a Caves and Cliffs feature anymore, but it's on the Iceberg. So the Dimming of Light, that has to do with the Skulk Shrieker. The thing is really, really cool. When you get the Darkness effect, it will actually dim things. This is going to happen in 1.19. It's so creepy. It's going to add to the ambiance of the Deep Dark so much. It's going to make it really intense feeling. It's sweet. Originally, it was going to be in the Caves and Cliffs update. Now it'll be in 1.19. This is a mysterious and mystical one. The Skulk Sensor. So clearly, there's a typo here. I'm pretty sure the typo was intentional though, because if we go back up one layer, more skulk blocks are spelled right right there. I couldn't find anything concrete on this one, so I'm assuming there was a typo somewhere within the game files or something. I mean, it's a pretty common misspelling too though, I definitely spelled it like that at the beginning too. But maybe it's referring to the skulk sensor, which is this thing right here. It's pretty sweet. Item.glowframe. I had no clue what they were on about with this one, no clue at all. Thankfully the creator of the iceberg explained it down on the original thread. Item.glowframe was a glitch on Bedrock Edition that appeared inside of the creative inventory. Basically a naming glitch. It's 100% gone now, so there's nothing I can show you. Calibrated Skulk Sensor. Oh boy, this is a big one. Honestly, I have no clue how I completely missed this one. Never heard of it before now, but Calibrated Skulk Sensor. For a little bit of time, there was a mysterious texture inside of the snapshots. It was the Calibrated Skulk Sensor texture. I don't know who to credit for actually originally finding this one, but here's a Reddit thread talking about it. And here's a bug talking about it, mcbug208551, look at the texture right there. This thing, it's like an amethyst block combined with a skulk sensor, like what? Did amethyst originally have something to do with skulk sensors or something? Or is this like a placeholder? Because this is like really, really strange looking. Like, what even is a calibrated skulk sensor? There was some theorizing in the Reddit thread that maybe this had to do with skulk sensors hooked up to comparators because, you know, they were like calibrated to certain sounds or something. But calibrated skulk sensor, skulk sensor plus amethyst block equals calibrated skulk sensor. <laughs> uh, okay then. Root vines, another one that I had absolutely zero clue about until now. Inside of the game files, at one point there was a texture for something called a root vine. This is the texture right here. I mean, if we took a look at things inside of the game that kind of look like it, hanging roots, I mean, vaguely, the texture is definitely off, but it is kind of similar. And then glowberry vine, yeah, this is like definitely like really, really close to it, but it's still not exactly it. If I had to take a guess, it definitely looks like this has something to do with the glowberry vine. Maybe this would have been like the start of the growth or maybe like the end of the growth or something like that, but it's gone. It's not used and we'll probably never know what it was actually meant to be. Wow, we've actually made it to the final thing on the iceberg today. And diorite line generation or just line generation in general. Check out this screenshot right here. This is a terrible looking screenshot, really low quality, I know, but it's the best one that I could find. Sometime early on in the development cycle of the Caves and Cliffs update and the new terrain, this screenshot appeared somewhere. This screenshot clearly shows diorite generating in a line instead of a blob like it does right now. Could have been really cool to see, but it doesn't work like that in the final release of the Caves and Cliffs update. They generate in blotches. I mean, kind of. I, it kind of does actually work like that. If you take a look at the Sony Peaks biome, this is a line right here. It's not a line like in that screenshot, but it's definitely a line. This time it's calcite, so much better, and it's generating a line right through the Sony Peaks biome. 
Also, uh, look at this. I was talking about the mountains getting cut off earlier. Didn't exactly have a tall mountain, though. Right here. Here's a tall one. 255. It gets cut off. But actually, it looks relatively normal. Like, clearly cut off, but pretty normal looking. For the officially unofficial Caves and Cliffs Iceberg, that does it. I have three things that I wanted to add to it, though. Back in August, before the official 1.18 snapshots, we got test snapshots. It was pretty cool. Inside of the test snapshots, amazing elytra change. The cut elytra buffs. I'm going to place them in this layer right here with the Lime Axolotl. 1.18 almost had some amazing, amazing elytra changes. Uh, basically, gliding was completely free. The elytra would only take damage when you were using a rocket. It was so good. One of my favorite changes, like, ever, basically. But yeah, they, they were unfortunately cut. Maybe one day they'll make it back into the game, but they're cut. If you jump into the game in 1.18 and explore a little bit, check out the biome names, you know how it goes, then you might find some new stuff. Windswept biomes and old growth biomes. They're not exactly new, they're old biomes, but windswept and old growth, those are definitely new parts of the name. I would probably place these in this layer with the OG copper texture because it's not exactly like entirely obvious, like I wouldn't say everybody knows about this, but at the same time it's not like some big hidden secret, it's kind of like right in the middle, maybe you know about it, maybe you don't. Finally, this one. Unless you paid insanely close attention to detail at Minecraft Live 2020, maybe you never heard about it at all. Closing Spore Blossom. This definitely, 100%, without a doubt, goes into the bottom layer right here. OG Spore Blossom concept art from Minecraft Live 2020. This stuff right here. There's a closed Spore Blossom. Doesn't work like that. Honestly, probably even the devs forgot about this one. That's why I'm putting it at the bottom of the iceberg. And honestly, like, not just the bottom, like, the very, very bottom. Like, underneath the bottom of the iceberg. That does it. The entire Minecraft Caves and Cliffs iceberg, plus a few things that I would add to it. What would you add to the iceberg? I had a lot of fun making this video, absolutely. I want to make more iceberg videos. If you like the sounds of that, leave a like, and maybe it'll convince me. Also, you know, to make more iceberg videos, kinda need more icebergs. So either make an iceberg and throw it on r slash waddles from a subreddit, or find an iceberg, credit the original creator, and put it on the subreddit. Thanks again for watching this one. Check my Twitter for updates. Subscribe for more videos all the time. I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye.